In case you haven't been paying attention, Garmin has penetrated the turbine market in impressive numbers, both through OEM and retrofit sales. From the G1000 NXI and King Airs, the G3000 and Honda Jets, Cirrus Jets and Phenom Jets, plus a retrofitable G700 TXI. Now Garmin's here at the convention showing off the latest, a G5000 retrofit in a Citation XL XLS. That system is already retrofitable for beach jets. This is significant progress in a sector of the avionics industry that's still heavily regulated. Here's Garmin's managing director of aviation, Phil Straub, to tell us about Garmin's Part 25 tech. Okay, we're at MBAA here 2018, showcasing a lot of our integrated flight deck technologies, particularly for the turbine aircraft market, growing up into the uh, super mid-size category. Textron Aviation's Longitude is one example of that. And a lot of people ask me, uh, what, what was our path to get to this point? And I really say it goes back many years. I really think about that beginning, say, in 1994. Uh, Garvin was first to introduce the uh, TSO 129A approach uh, approved GPS receiver called the GPS 155. It found broad market adoption in many different aircraft, from piston aircraft up through turbine platforms. Time goes forward, and then we begin bringing that technology, that suite of capabilities from not only the comms and the navs and the GPS, but also the audio panels and the transponders and everything else it takes to make a full flight deck, and we brought it forward into the G1000. Many people don't know that one of the first uh, uh, installations we did, or first programs that Garmin had, was the G1000 in the Cessna Mustang. It was Russ Meyer at the time talking to us about that program, and uh, they took a leap of faith with us to go from where we were with federated technology like that to make an integrated flight deck with an autopilot. So that G1000 ended up going into the Mustang, which introduced, I believe it was in 2007. And I like to highlight that because full circle now, over 10 years later, the airplane had a wonderful run, about 475 aircraft, if I remember right, and we're now in the mode where we're retrofitting that airplane with upgrades from the original G1000. But I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about uh, what we're doing with the other platforms. And one of the most noteworthy ones is the King Air Series. Uh, over 10 years ago, we began an integrated flight deck retrofit for the King Air Series, beginning with the 90, doing the 200, 300, 350. Now we've done over 600 uh, G1000 retrofits at this point, and of those, 150 are now NXI. Of the NXIs, about half of those have chosen to upgrade from their existing G1000 to NXI platform. Most of 2018, Daher has been doing the G1000 NXI upgrade on the TBM 850 and the 900. They've done over 100 at this point. Again, uh, tremendous value proposition for customers out there. As we look at other areas where we're kind of offering value and capability, we have a G700 TXI solution. Think of that as not as much of a fully integrated retrofit as a G1000 might be, but it allows you to pick and choose what you want to put in as a primary flight display replacement, as a multifunction display, and paired with a GTN, the G700 TXI now offers full LPV capability for many legacy aircraft such as the Citation 550, S550, and the 560. We've also added VNAV, coupled VNAV, well, I should say in route multi leg VNAV capability with the GTS. So now when you're flying these descent via clearances that can sometimes be back to back short legs with altitude constraints, you now have that full integration with the TXI for a vertical deviation display. And with the legacy autopilot, you can manually fly to the, I say fly, fly a coupled approach or fly a coupled descent using the vertical speed channel with the uh, GTN that way. On the other end of things, back to the full-scale retrofits, we have a Citation XLS here on static display. We've been working for about two years now. I announced that two years ago at MBAA, a G5000 retrofit. There's about 700 of these eligible aircraft out there. We've been working hard for two years doing system design, integration, ground test, thousands of hours of ground test. We've been doing a flight test campaign, a little over 125 hours at this point, pretty much where we want to be. 
will be entering what we call the type inspection authorization process soon, basically showing that the aircraft conforms to the drawings and the type design we've created. And this will be what we call our certification flight test and ground test campaign for the next 90 days or so. And really, I love to call this more of a demonstration than a test because when you enter this phase, you make a statement as a company that this aircraft conforms to the design that we intended. So it's a demonstration we'll be doing for the next 90 days. And we hope to have entry into service of that aircraft retrofit in the middle of the first half of 2019. Cost? Uh, we're expecting for customers out the door somewhere around probably $450,000, $500,000 out the door. Again, major modification of the aircraft, but addresses all regulatory compliance issues, uh, obsolescence issues, and paves the way for next gen with Datacom in the U.S., CPDLC in Europe, and we'll have follow-on with FANS uh, approval coming as well. Right, another big topic of the show here is ADSB. You know, the mandate, the deadline's coming up soon here, less than 18 months away, more like 15 months or so at this point. We have solutions that cover from everything from very light aircraft up to heavy turbine, part 25. Partnership with our dealers, offering our GTX 3000 for ADSB out compliance. And what's really unique about Garmin is we have the ADSB in options as well, offered through the GDL 88, which is a dual link receiver for 978 and 1090. So you can re receive traffic and weather over that. You can provide a consolidated traffic uh, bus to your, your display in the aircraft and we also have wireless connectivity to the tablet where you can have the full benefits of traffic and weather on those displays.